Genesis 3, the man and the woman sin. Verse 1, the serpent was the shrewdest of all the wild animals the Lord God had made. One day he asked the woman, did God really say you must not eat the fruit from any of the trees in the garden? Of course we may eat the fruit from the trees in the garden, the woman said, replied. It's only the fruit from the tree in the middle of the garden that we are not allowed to eat, God said. You must not eat or even touch it. If you do, you will die. You won't die, the serpent replied to the woman. God knows that your eyes will be opened as soon as you eat it. And you will be like God, knowing both good and evil. The woman was convinced. She saw that the tree was beautiful and its fruit looked delicious. And she wanted the wisdom it would give her. So she took some of the fruit and ate it. Then she gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it too. At, the, at that moment, their eyes were open and they suddenly felt shame at their nakedness. So they sewed fig leaves together to cover, to cover themselves. When the cool evening breezes were blowing, the man and his wife heard the Lord God walking about in the garden. So they hid from the Lord God among the trees. The Lord God called the man, where are you? He replied, I heard you walking in the garden, so I hid. I was afraid because I was naked. Who told you that you were naked? The Lord God asked. Have you eaten from the tree whose fruit I commanded you not to eat? The man replied, it was the woman you gave me who gave me the fruit and I ate it. Then the Lord asked the woman, what have you done? The serpent deceived me, she replied. That's why I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, you have cursed more than all animals, domestic and wild. You will crawl on your belly, groveling in the dust as long as you live. And you will cause hostility between you and the woman and between your offspring and her offspring. He will strike your head and you will strike his heel. Then he said to the woman, I will sharpen the pain of your pregnancy. And in pain, you will give birth and you will desire to control your husband, but he will rule over you. And to the man, he said, since you listened to your wife and ate from the tree whose fruit I commanded you not to eat, the ground is cursed because of you. All your life, you will struggle to scratch a living from it. It will grow thorns and thistles for you. Tough, though you will eat its grains. By the sweat of your brow will you have food to eat until you return to the ground from which you were made. For you were made from dust and to dust you will return. Paradise lost, God's judgment. Then the man, Adam, named his wife Eve because she would be the mother of all who live. And the Lord God made clothing from animal skins for Adam and his wife. Then the Lord God said, Look, the human beings have become like us, knowing both good and evil. What if they reach out, take fruit from the tree of life and eat it? Then they will live forever. So the Lord God banished them from the Garden of Eden. And he sent Adam out to cultivate the ground from which he had been made. After sending them out, the Lord God stationed mighty cherubim to the east of the garden Eden. And he placed a flaming sword that flashed back and forth to guard the way to the tree of life. Wow. 
This third chapter of Genesis, I've never read before, but it has so many interesting learnings in it. And we're going to start with the first one. So it starts by the serpent, which is metaphoric for the sin who is aimed at the who is aimed at the woman. So you shouldn't see this as literal. You should see this as the sin, the thought of sin, the, the good feelings that you associate with sin, the, the instant gratification you want right now. It seduces the feminine part of you. And if you let the feminine part of you, the part of you that wants the good feelings right now instead of the growth later, influence your masculine part, which is responsible for the actions and all of this, then you will go to shit. I'm being honest here. If you do this once or twice, it doesn't matter. But most men can't do this once or twice or as a reward. Most men in this age either are completely seduced by sin and let their feminine part flood into their masculine part and they have no clear border in themselves. And so they become feminine and they become unhappy and suicidal and all these things. This is the first thing. To not to, to have to set a border within yourself to not let the feminine desires you have, the desire for instant gratification right now, flood over into your actions. This is the first thing. And second of all, the man sees himself and he is in Eden, right? And if we now associate this with our real lives, which, what, which, which we should do, we should associate the Bible, the holy word of God, with our lives. And if we think about this, at the beginning of your self-improvement journey, or at least that's what I, what it was with me, I was kind of like blind to what was right and what was wrong. And self-improvement was easy. And right now I'm aspiring to go back to the same feeling, to the same curiosity, or oh, what is this, right? Self-improvement back then was a whole new world for me as, the, the Garden of Eden was a new world for Adam and Eve. And then by eating the fruit of truth and, and lie, by eating the fruit of, of, of wisdom, Adam and Eve become wise and they see, oh shit, I'm naked. Um, let's, let's use clothing to cover us up. And the same thing happens in self-improvement. I look back to the time where I didn't have books, where I only watched self-improvement videos like once a week. And I was just doing the habits and I was just exploring the self-improvement and was so, so good. And then I discovered, oh, there are books on this. Oh, there are podcasts on this. And then self-improvement became first even more exciting. I was eating the apple. I was eating the fruit of wisdom. But afterwards, I thought to myself, and this is the stage where I I am in right now, self-improvement has just become stale. It's not, I'm I'm, I'm not so curious anymore. I'm not like this childish character who's exploring everything and for whom everything is new. This is one of the reasons why I don't listen to self-improvement podcasts. I list the only podcast I listen to is the Bible in a year podcast by Ascension. This is the only podcast I personally listen to because I want this curiosity. I want to explore things and find things myself because in podcasts and also in videos, they will always just tell you the blunt truth. And that is horrible for you. I'm right now trying to move away with my advice from just telling you, okay, this is how it is. This is how it is. I'm trying to just give you the habit that you need and then leave you to explore the rest yourself because I want for you the same path I was on too. And and it's beautiful. By all means, if you've just started self-improvement, don't fucking watch anything. Abandon YouTube. 
I'm right now speaking to my younger self. Please don't fucking buy all sorts of books and everything and watch self-improvement videos all day long and ruin your, your curiosity with this. If I could rewind this, I would do it instantly. Life isn't exciting anymore when you know everything, when you know how your fucking sleep works and how you optimize everything. It's way less curious if you think like, oh, maybe if I do it like this, let me just try it for two weeks to sleep with a blanket and with a, without a blanket or on the floor or barefoot walking and everything. And I think it's horrible that the self-improvement industry just teaches you everything and just tells you, yeah, here's the information, go fuck yourself. Curiosity is the best thing you can achieve and by all means, keep your curiosity, please. This is, the, this is the lesson we need to draw from this, from Genesis 3. This is the lesson we need to learn from this book, Genesis. Keep your curiosity because after he ate the fruit, after he did the instant gratification, after he educated himself on everything, after he, know, after he knew what was good and what was bad, he had to work even harder. And, and, and think about it. This is exactly what happened to me. I was put in the Garden of Eden. I was curious. I was running around looking at trees and, and taking pictures of my favorite leaves and all this shit, right? And I think, what the fuck did I do back then? Fuck, man. I was so curious. I was like a little child. And, and now I'm, I'm trying to get back to it. And it's exactly what it says in the book. This is the, this is the crazy thing about it. You will work all your life to get back here, but you can't because now you've ate from the fruit. Stay curious, please. Don't be one of these people who knows everything. Knowing everything is not as cool as you think it is. I'm not in a state where I think I know everything, but I know a lot because I was on this grindstone, nose to the grindstone thing, learn every single second, learn, 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 learn. And what I didn't realize was that I was destroying myself. Of course, don't educate yourself, not at all. This is not what I'm saying here, but have a little bit of curiosity. When you're at the base level of self-improvement, which is I meditate, I journal, I go to the gym, I know a little bit about mental health, um, I know how to read, I know um, how to increase my attention span and all these things. If you know the base, stop educating yourself. Stop it. Don't educate yourself on sleep, nothing. If necessary, and if you've got the money to do that, pay someone to tell you what to do, but not what it will do. Because if you know what it will do, you'll... You'll think to yourself, well, now I know everything. Now it's boring. I hope you can relate to this message because my younger self would have really needed this. Myself from two years ago, completely uneducated on self-improvement. Those four months where I was on self-improvement, just trying things were heaven. They were the Garden of Eden, trust me. I was standing in front of my mirror on a regular basis, flexing all my muscles that I got. And I was screaming, I love my life. Now I've got all this shit going on inside my head. Now I've got protocols that I'm on and all of this, and I'm currently trying to let go of this and it's hard. It's like, it's like quitting to smoke because it's so satisfying, right? You find a new thing and then you want to go into the rabbit hole instantly and learn everything about it and implement it perfectly tomorrow. And even today when I find something new, I just out of a, out of a habit, just out of this habit that I built in the past, I recently started walking on barefoot. And the first thing I, I, I did when I thought about, okay, let's walk barefoot. I thought like, okay, let's watch a video by some fucking doctor who explains me everything. And I curse myself, my younger self from like a couple of days ago who looked up how to walk barefoot optimally by some fucking doctor. 
I curse my younger self for this shit because I would have loved to just experience it, to just learn from it. Don't go into the deep rabbit hole. I say that learning 20% of the thing you need to learn, just learning the habit, and then try new things out is the optimal place to be in. Don't educate yourself beyond a level you can comprehend, beyond a level you think is good for you. And I would say, educate yourself until you can do the habit, until you simply can do the habit, and then stop. I'm not gonna make meditation videos or many meditation videos anymore because Trying new breathing techniques out is the most fun thing I can do. Trying to move my arms around to, to create some force or, or, or does, does, does this to this make a difference or does this to this is better? Maybe. I don't fucking know. Let's try it. I'm curious to know, does this make a difference to this? or this, or this, or even this, or this. I'm fucking curious. I want to fucking know now, right now, I want to go meditate and try it out. Maybe it makes a difference. But maybe I'm just going to watch a video and let myself get spoiled. What do you think I should do? What do you think, what do you, think you should do? Should you educate yourself so you know everything? Should you eat the fruit of wisdom? Or should you simply enjoy live in the life and the light of God and stay curious and experiment? Have a nice day. Find something new out for yourself today. Please do it for me or for yourself for that matter. And master your mind. Thank you.